In the early days of blockchain development, the most common projects forked the original Bitcoin codebase to modify small but significant portions of the codebase. Litecoin and Dogecoin using S-Script, the memory hard hashing function, is an example of this. This process required modifying the Bitcoin source code directly, as well as developing a new community and a new set of miners, essentially starting from scratch on all levels. With the popularization of Ethereum, smart contracts enabled users, from developers to companies to blockchain activists, to encode business logic directly into an existing platform, rather than making their own from scratch. However, this also means that each application is competing for resources with all other applications on the same network. And this was demonstrated by CryptoKitties throttling the entire Ethereum network. This is equivalent to one website clogging the entire internet. While both these approaches were good starting points, they also brought with them high overhead and low optimization. What if we want to make a blockchain or distributed ledger network with lower requirements for trustlessness to decrease overhead? With the increased trust assumptions in permission ledgers, there's no longer a strong enough need for high computational expenditure to reduce the chances of an attack. Enterprise blockchain platforms exist precisely to enable businesses to implement their own blockchain use case ideas without starting from scratch. In this section, we'll be taking a look at some enterprise blockchain platforms. We'll take a look at what blockchain platforms are out there in the industry today that companies have started to develop on top of, rather than building their own blockchains, leveraging modularity in design. Keep in mind that none of the examples within this lecture are supporting or opposing any particular initiatives. We're simply sampling a variety of projects across multiple different facets of the enterprise blockchain space. As the use of blockchain becomes more and more prevalent, the issue of scalability also grows. The idea of the scalability trilemma is that from decentralization, security, and also scalability, all blockchains can only have two out of those three properties. Initially, most blockchain technologies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum were built with the two main focuses on security and decentralization. However, as the number of users and transactions grew, the network slowed down and bottlenecks with performance become apparent. Due to this, many newer blockchains are taking scalability into consideration in their designs, as well as previous ones attempting to mitigate these issues by incorporating new ideas into existing systems. For example, Ethereum has researched into sharding and plasma for potential solutions to its scaling problem, and also Bitcoin has its lightning network. Instead of attempting to solve scalability while keeping both security and decentralization, some blockchains sacrifice the decentralized property in order to allow for scalability. In blockchains such as enterprise blockchains, they oftentimes have less of a need for decentralization, as their use cases are usually limited to very specific users. Thus, these blockchains still follow the scalability trilemma and exchange decentralization for scalability and security. Ethereum is the industry standard blockchain platform for public projects at this point. Ethereum is, as stated on its website, a decentralized platform that runs smart contracts, which are apps that run exactly as programmed, no matter what. These smart contracts are what made Ethereum so popular in the first place. While Bitcoin remains the most apparent use of blockchain technology, Ethereum generalized the advantages of blockchain. Ethereum's smart contracts are written in Solidity, which is a Turing-complete language, this basically means that you can theoretically write any program using it, and therefore, you can theoretically run any program on the Ethereum network. This key innovation set the stage for many other platforms that we'll talk about later in this section. The Enterprise Ethereum Alliance was created precisely to meet the needs of enterprise projects. Consisting of several traditionally large names such as Intel, JP Morgan, and Microsoft, along with blockchain organizations such as Tendermint, Chronicled, and IC3. Their aim is to produce blockchain standards for businesses of all kinds to use. Consensus is a startup founded by one of Ethereum's co-founders, Joe Lubin, meant to develop and foster growth in the Ethereum ecosystem, helping popular initiatives such as MetaMask and Truffle. Hyperledger, a project of the Linux Foundation, was one of the earliest responses to the need for easily accessible permissioned or private blockchain platforms, and is led by Executive Director Brian Bellendorf. 
Hyperledger focuses on a wide breadth of industries, including finance, healthcare, and supply chain, some of the most popular use cases. Its goal is to allow any business or consortium to design their custom blockchain from scratch with as little friction as possible. Hyperledger is made of quite a few different projects. Hyperledger Fabric is the most popular to date, initiated by IBM written in the Go programming language. It allows for smart contracts to be written on top of the platform, along with confidential transactions to be made between select participants. It also uses PBFT to come to consensus, specifically Kafka. Hyperledger Sawtooth is another version of Hyperledger, originally coming from Intel using proof of elapsed time as their consensus mechanism. Using a Nakamoto consensus style mechanism was to allow businesses to develop permissionless blockchain networks, whereas Fabric can only handle permissioned. However, this leads to compromising on privacy. Similar to the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, many companies have pledged their support towards Hyperledger, making for over 250 participants within the consortium. If you're interested in learning more about Hyperledger, feel free to check out their own edX course. Corda focuses on enabling banks to record, manage, synchronize, and support financial transactions and agreements through distributed ledger technology. Though the technology does not use blockchains, the superset distributed ledger technology refers to decentralized record management. This was a project first led by R3, a banking consortium which attempted to unify major banking institutions around the world. This system, like Hyperledger Fabric, has no native currency. Additionally, their system requires the participation of notaries to come to consensus, serving as authority services signing off on previously seen transactions to provide uniqueness consensus. Corda also has validity consensus guarantees. Upon being asked to notarize a transaction, a notary will either 1. sign the transaction if it has not already signed off on other transactions consuming any of the proposed transaction input states, or 2. reject the transaction and flag that as a double spend attempt that has otherwise occurred. Chain is another blockchain platform also aimed at financial services. It uses a federated consensus mechanism with M of N signatures required in each quorum for the block to be considered valid for the other nodes within the quorum. Chain recognizes that it is not currently Byzantine fault tolerant, referencing PBFT and Tendermint as showing promise in the area, looking to potentially move in that direction in the future. Chain also produced a cloud-based ledger service known as Sequence to provide ledger-as-a-service products to businesses, handling the infrastructure on behalf of businesses. Private keys are kept in the hands of entities using the network, while Sequence hosts the blockchain on behalf of the users, meaning that Sequence cannot produce transactions on any user's behalf. Ripple is another enterprise blockchain platform focusing on creating a global network of financial services. To enable such platforms, it uses an internal cryptocurrency called XRP. It runs a federated consensus mechanism, which we mentioned briefly in week one. Within the network, there are various types of participants, which Ripple classifies as network users and network members. Network members include banks and payment providers and provide the core services of the Ripple network, such as processing payments and providing liquidity. The Ripple network enables them to have a wider reach, to expand payout reach and increase payment volumes. Network users, on the other hand, include corporates, small, medium-sized enterprises, small banks, and payment providers. Network users use the services enabled by the Ripple network. For example, platform businesses might look to send disbursements of high volume and low value to suppliers, merchants, and employees and banks and payment providers might look to send payments rather than process them and to overcome traditional inefficiencies of correspondent banking. Ripple Network supports processing of real-time payments, sourcing of on-demand liquidity, and sending global payments. These are all called XCurrent, XRapid, and XVIA, respectively. Rootstock, a Bitcoin sidechain, aims to integrate smart contracts with the Bitcoin blockchain. It has a two-way peg, which will be explained deeper in the next lecture. Essentially, a two-way peg is a method by which data can be transferred between a main chain and a sidechain. Rootstock developed out of Kixcoin, 
the first cryptocurrency blockchain with a Turing-complete language, meant to enable peer-to-peer -peer games. The Kixcoin staff saw Bitcoin as a way to add security to their platform through merge mining, which reuses the mining power of the main chain on a sidechain. Rootstock aims to not only allow users to write smart contracts interacting with the Bitcoin network, but also to increase scalability using blockchain sharding techniques and creating blocks every 10 seconds instead of every 10 minutes. Quorum is a lightweight fork of Ethereum, built for enterprise, with a particular focus on governance, confidentiality, and security for streamlining global payments. With Quorum, nodes and activity on the network can be tied to real-world identities. It also enables confidentiality, allowing for details of transactions to be private. Quorum can also be configured to have minimal trust assumptions between participants. Quorum manages most of its secure message transfers through a system called Constellation. This allows Quorum to have support for both public and private transactions. Public transactions are conducted as they would be on the Ethereum network, whereas private transactions can only be viewed by participants who have been specified as recipients. Quorum enables configurable consensus mechanisms. Quorum Chain is a simple majority voting protocol where a certain set of nodes are delegated voting rights, and all nodes with voting rights themselves can also grant voting rights to others. Quorum also supports pluggable Istanbul BFT and Raft-based consensus mechanisms. Cosmos is an initiative to connect blockchains together. It focuses on blockchain interoperability. For example, if I currently want to exchange Bitcoin for Ether, I'd have to go through an intermediary, like an exchange. Cosmos, however, will allow us to connect multiple blockchains to the same hub, powered by the consensus mechanism called Tendermint. Tendermint also provides ways for users to build their own blockchain applications in any language they'd like, through what's known as the application blockchain interface. Furthermore, blockchains talk to each other through the inter-blockchain communication protocol. Cosmos and Tendermint can also be used in enterprise contexts. Cosmos may provide a way for private blockchains to connect, even if using different types of protocols, such as Hyperledger Fabric blockchain as well as Corda blockchain. Tendermint being an efficient consensus mechanism, which starts with a semi-trusted set of validators, is a prime consensus mechanism for enterprise blockchain networks as well. We'll be focusing a bit more on the specifics of Cosmos and Tendermint come the scalability lecture. As a short summary of all the enterprise blockchains we've seen in the past couple of slides, let's tie it back to a more fundamental understanding of blockchain and enterprise use cases in general. We want to focus on the underlying technology supporting these enterprise blockchain platforms. So it's a good idea to look at the architecture. Particularly, does the platform architecture work well with the use cases that the developers want to enable? For example, there's an obvious difference between the focuses of some enterprise blockchains versus that of public blockchains. We can sum this up nicely by referring back to the three key properties we mentioned earlier, scalability, decentralization, and security. Enterprise blockchains oftentimes have an inherent boost in their ability to scale, since they work with smaller networks with trust guarantees. For the same reason, enterprise blockchains are less centralized than public blockchains, and this matches their use case. Because enterprise blockchains are mostly permissioned, there's also less potential security issues as well. Designing with these three properties, scalability, decentralization, and security in mind, entails further consideration of network architecture and choice of consensus mechanisms. In the next section, we'll see the applications of these, as well as generalizations of enterprise blockchain use cases, and also when not to use blockchain.